Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Here's what we've done so far. We have chosen an art type for Maven and uh, we have set up our code and project structure in our uh, development environment. And we also used Maven in order to compile, run test cases, build and uh, publish our artifact into our repository. In this tutorial, we're gonna look at dependencies. So what I'll do is in the sample project that Maven provided for me, I will add a dependency and uh, I will make changes to the pom.xml in order to uh, in order to let Maven know that I have this dependency and it needs to import the jars. So uh, by doing this, we will learn how to set up dependencies in Maven. So here I am at my uh, project location. I have my pom.xml here. I have the source folder here. The target folder is actually the result of all the build and uh, compile that we did earlier. I can actually clear this out by using a command called mvn clean. Now clean is a phase which removes all the classes and all the you know the distributions that uh, were generated before. So here you can see it's actually doing a delete of this target folder where all the classes in the jars are available. So of the target folder is gone so we are we are as if uh, this is as if uh, we've just created this uh, you know the project structure and we have not run any compile we haven't we haven't generated any classes yet so what I'll do is I'll go to the source folder okay I'm here at the source folder and uh, here we have two folders which is main and test now I'll be focusing on adding a dependency so I'll be focusing only on main I'm not going to write any test cases in this tutorial so what I'll do is I'll open up the Java file that has been created here which is the app.java it is just a simple hello world so what I'll do is I will add a dependency here the example that I'm going to choose is a logging framework so I'll use the slf for j logging framework API in order to log a test message normally what would happen is if I was doing this outside of maven I would have to go download the slf for j jars and then add it to the class path and only after that would I be able to compile any class file which has a dependency on those classes in the jar but uh, when it comes to maven we don't have to you know go and download all the jars and and add it to the class path. There are things that Maven does automatically for us. We just have to tell Maven that we have this dependency. So first, let me add the code here in this uh, main class in order to log this hello world message. So instead of printing it to the system.out, what I'll do is I'll print it to a log file using slfj. So I'll just comment this line out. And then I will use the logger object of slfj. Okay, so it's a simple piece of code. I just have the logger factory here, and then um, I'm just printing out an info message, which is hello world. Now, let me import the slfj dependencies over here. So what I'll do is I'll just do an import org dot slfj. Let me import all the classes here. Might need this later. Okay, so I've done the import here and uh, I have used the logger class in order to print a log message. I'll save this and close this. Now let's see what happens if I run a Maven compile now. So I have made the change to the, you know, the class in this SRC folder. Now if I ask Maven to compile this, What's going to happen is it's going to return in a return an error message. So let me expand this. So you can see this clearly. Okay. So here you can see there is an error in the compile. 
Uh, note that it says Maven compiler plugin. Okay, so it's actually a compiler plugin. We'll talk about plugins later, but just make a mental note of this. Uh, what's happening is the compile is failing. There is a compilation error and it says that org.slfj does not exist because it cannot do an import. There's no such class there in the class path. And then it cannot find the logger class, obviously, again, because we don't have the logger factory. So this is a problem because we don't have the jar file in place. So how do we tell Maven to include the jar file? First, we need to tell Maven to pull up the jar file from the central repository with the main repository which is accessible over the internet it does not assume that it's not there in our development environment at all what we can do is we can ask maven to go connect to the central repository and pull up this jar file and uh, in order to do that what we need to do is we need to go to the pom.xml so here i'll edit the pom.xml and here what I'll do is, just like we have the dependency here for JUnit, I need to add another dependency for SLF for J. So what I need to do is, I need to have another dependency tag. And here, I need to specify the group ID, the artifact ID, the version, and the scope. Same as what we have done for JUnit. In JUnit, we have specified the group ID, artifact ID, version, and the scope. As we've discussed this earlier, these are the coordinates, at least these three. Uh, these three, the GAV, are the coordinates for Maven in order to identify any particular JAR file. So we need to provide this set, these three values for our SLFJ, SLFJ jar. Now, how do we find out what these values are? Well, there are actually a lot of uh, sites that help us search for these repositories. So what we'll do is we'll open up uh, our browser and uh, we will search for Maven repository search. So here we have mavenrepository.com, mvnbrowser.com, repository.sonotype.com. Sonotype is the company that uh, that does a lot of work on Maven. So we can we can look in at any of these uh, sites here. So we will search by a group ID. It, we can search by group ID. We can search by artifact ID or by some description. So what I'll do is I'll just type slf for j and it comes up with the list of matches and uh, I'll just go with the SLFJ API. And here we see all the different versions and we have the types, whether they're uh, you know, a release or a release candidate or an alpha, uh, it's recommended to go for a release uh, because they are the stable versions. So what I'll do is I'll just click on the version number here and it's gonna tell me the piece of code that I need to add as a dependency over here. See, it has the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version. So for 1.6.1, so these are the values that I need to enter. So it's fairly simple here. I have the org.slf4j as the group ID, and the artifact ID is slf4j hyphen API. So I'm gonna copy this snippet here and paste it over here in between these dependency tags. Fix the indentation a bit and save this. Okay, so now all I need to do is run this MVN compile command again. So now this time what's gonna happen is Maven is gonna look at this dependency tag over here. There's an additional dependency tag. So what Maven does is before it actually issues the compile command, it will go and download all the jars which are required for this SLFJ API. And uh, once it gets all the jars, it's going to include them in the class path and makes it available for compile. So if I just run this again, you should be able to see the SLFJ downloads happening. So there you go. It's actually connecting to the Maven repository and it is downloading all the resources. And this time you can see 
that the build has been successful and there is a classes folder generated in the target directory and we have successfully compiled the class. One thing you should note here is that uh, in this dependency, where I've added the dependency for SLFJ, I do not have a scope value. If you see here, for the JUnit dependency, there is something called as a scope, and we have mentioned the value as test, but uh, we do not have a scope value here. Well, what's happening is, we, uh, since we haven't provided the scope value, it's taking the default scope and the default scope is compile. So let's say I do not enter a scope value, it's gonna be same as this with a compile scope. Now what compile scope means is that this uh, jar is gonna be available during the compile phase. We're gonna look at the few other scopes as we go on. We're gonna develop a few other types of applications and see how these scopes uh, work. But uh, the thing to note here is that Compile is the default scope, and if we do not specify the scope, it's same as specifying a compile scope, and this means that the jar that we have mentioned as a dependency is available during compile time.